Hello! Welcome to Inky Art School. This video was a live class I held on Facebook as part of my free 10-day Inky Art School course. You can watch all 10 videos and get the free downloads I mention at www.johannabasford.com forward slash Inky Art School. I'll pop a link below. And if you like this class, be sure to check out my book, How to Draw Inky Wonderlands. It's jam-packed with easy-to-follow, step-by-step tutorials, creative project ideas, and of course, it wouldn't be an inky adventure without some pages to colour. Thanks for watching, and have fun! Hello! Lovely to see you all here again today. Thank you for joining me for day three of Inky Art School. I always think I'm like all prepared and ready to go live and then I remember loads of things I haven't done. Let me just have a look on here. If you can hear me okay, could you do me a thumbs up or a love heart? Oh, caps lock on. Hmm. I'm assuming that that's not meant for me. Everyone seems pretty happy on there. I'm assuming that we're okay. So, oh, it's so hot again in here today. I think it's because hey, I've got loads and loads of lights on. But welcome along to day three of Inky Art School. I am so delighted that you're here joining me again. We have got a peach, a peach of a tutorial for you today. So first off, I love seeing your work. Thank you so much for everyone who has been sharing your pictures, for uploading them onto the gallery post on the Facebook group. It's wonderful. I thought I had gone through them all and a and liked them and commented, but then loads and loads and loads of other ones started appearing this morning. So I don't know if there's been a little bit of a Facebook glitch, but please bear with me. I want to look at them all and say well done and thank you for coming on this inky adventure with me. Once again, I have three that I want to show you. And for some reason, my printer's printing them out like a really weird orange color, but we'll just go with it. Here we go. So here's the first one. <laughs> Take this out there we this one is by I want to say Helly or Hell H E L L E. I don't know how you spell your name. But I, how you say it. Sorry, sweetheart. But look how lovely this is. She has drawn the artwork in the book. It's so pretty. Well done. Love it. Next up we have Kim. I feel like the girl that does the birthday cards and CBBs, but obviously not as slick. Now, Kim has done not one, but two little bumblebees up here. I love this, Kim. Also, can we just like acknowledge Kim's lovely line art? I, her line seems much more expressive than me. Like, I always think my line looks a little bit, not flat, but it's really quite graphic. I think Kim's line looks much more sort of whimsical and more characterful, if that makes sense. A bit more Dr. Zeus is what I think I'm going to try to say. Last up, we have Rena. Now, Rena has been super clever. Rena used the, the printer that I did, but look, she did two and turned it into, sorry, Rena like a double page spread. Let me do this over here. I don't know if you can see that. I can't really, because I have the camera so close in when we're doing the tutorials, it doesn't, it's not great for this. I'll maybe pop these in the gallery um, and highlight them so you can see them in person, but they're just, she did such a clever thing. She printed out two copies of the download and had them side by side, so she sort of mirrored that way that it is in the book where it's a double page spread. I just thought it was lovely. Such a clever, such a clever idea. Well done. Okay, so onwards and upwards. Hey, I have a little confession to make. You guys are actually my secret test audience. Um, so we're doing this course like this online on Facebook. Um, and if it goes well, which it seems to be, if I'm being honest, I'm quite keen to try and take the content that we've done and make it into an actual online course. So if you are really enjoying this, if you're liking this, um, please leave a comment on the video because it's really helpful for me. And if there's things that would be better if they were different, again, please let me know. I'm probably going to do like a little feedback form email type thing, monkey survey. What is that thing? Survey monkey at the end and see what's worked well and all those good things. And the next one we probably wouldn't do it on Facebook, probably have a bit more of a slicker setup. 
but I just think it's a really great way to um yeah to bring tutorials to you and to have it a bit more interactive to, to sort of support the book the book by the way which I found out last night has now sold more copies in the first week than Ivy and the Inky Butterfly did or World of Flowers. So that means that more people are picking up pens or pencils than we could ever have imagined and are embarking on this new creative adventure. And that is in no small part, part thanks to you guys for being such champions of this new creative adventure. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you. You guys are doing a wonderful thing, not only for yourselves, but for other people. Because every time you share a picture of your work or mentioning art school or speak about the new book that you've got, you are helping more and more people to find the new book, to find that they can draw, to discover our new way of drawing. Because I think a lot of people think a drawing course is going to be like, here's a bowl of fruit. Now we're going to speak about perspective. Um, you have to discover your own way of drawing, blah, 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 blah. And all those things are right and true, but they don't work for everyone. And for those people that they don't work for, there's never really been anything in the past. So that is why we have Inky Art School to... to to sort of fill that void, I guess. I'm babbling. Let's move on. So um, our quick chat for today wasn't meant to be about that. It was about can drawing make you happier? Now, a lot of people asked me when colouring books first came around, you know, had I invented it, which I hadn't, um, to try and make people happier? And the answer is not directly, but yeah, I guess in a way, because drawing makes me happy, colouring makes me happy, and I wanted to spread a little bit of that joy. So why does it make you happier? So here is what Brené Brown thinks. Now, if you don't know who Brené Brown is, look her up. She has a book called, oh, is it Living Courageously? Oh, I'll need to check. That's terrible. I was going to say born to lead or whatever it is but that was that's a different one I'll, I'll i'll find out and i'll pop a link but brenny brown is a wonderful a uh, researcher who also writes books and she has a netflix special in the uk if you're here just now watch it it's fantastic um and she researches things like shame and vulnerability and courageousness and happiness and one thing she has discovered that people that um, have this overwhelming sense of happiness and joy in life, which she calls wholehearted living, embrace vulnerability. Now, I know what you're thinking, what on earth has this got to do with Inky Art School? But here's the thing, when we create, when we make a piece of art, being a little bit vulnerable, because you're sort of putting a little bit of yourself down on the page, making a piece of artwork, which whether we like it or not, is then going to be judged either by yourself or by someone else. And not in a nasty, critical way. I mean, that's just what we do. We draw something and we look at it and we decide for ourselves if it looks good or not. Eh, it's just the way it is. So by drawing, you're being a teeny little bit vulnerable. And embracing vulnerability, Brenny Brown says, is the, is the easiest, quick way to, to sort of embrace wholehearted living. So here's what I think. I think drawing is a tiny little bite-sized bit of vulnerability that you can do every day but it's the bite-sized bits that lead up to the banquet. So it's like, it's not like being vulnerable and deciding you're going to sing a solo at the next village play or launch a YouTube channel or write a novel. Like all those things are great and creative and definitely tick all the boxes, but come on, this is real life. We need something that we can do in 10 minutes per day. That's where drawing comes in. You know, this is a creative practice that could definitely help you um, embrace a more wholehearted living sort of way of life. That was a mumbled sentence, but guys, this could help make you happier. And if that isn't a reason to just give it 10 minutes a day, I don't know what is. So that's that. That sounded better in my head. I'm going to write that down for you guys. I think it's going to come out better typed. Uh, let's move on to the drawing. So today, Peach for you. We are going to be doing a tutorial that involves drawing a really pretty, I don't think this is going to work, wildflower print. Let me switch cameras. So this is what it looks like. I will post a photo of it on the Facebook page, but essentially it's like 12 pretty little wildflowers placed beautifully on a single page. And I was like that. When I've seen things like this in the past, I've always assumed that people did it digitally. Like they drew the flowers and then they scanned them in and sorted out online. 
And then I discovered a new way of doing it that means you don't need to do it digitally, so you don't need a computer, which to my mind is much better. So you should hopefully have printed out this download. If you, I just, I just can't wear this out, look like that, this, this. If you are working on layout paper, we are going to slide that beneath the sheet that you are working on. If you are working on anything thicker, you're not going to be able to see through it to trace. So you're going to have to use a scalpel and a steel ruler and cut them out to make like a stencil. If you didn't have a printer, you can do the same thing on squared paper. Copy the photo that I posted yesterday to get all the dimensions. There's a square paper download now as well. That feels like a lot of prep. Let's stop talking. We've been online for like 10 minutes and I've not drawn a single thing. Let's get going. I'm just going to have a little, mug, a little mug of tea, a little spig of tea. I really, really like this cup, but it's so badly designed. I keep spilling my tea out of it. So I'm going to switch cameras and we're going to get going. So this is the download. Oh. Somebody asks, keeps asking, somebody keeps asking, people keep asking how long the files are going to be available for and the videos. Folks, I am not going to take them off Facebook. They're going to be in this group forever. So don't worry, they're not going to disappear if you're at a busy stage in life just now. No panic. Right, look, here we go. I am putting my sheet of my my sheet of download, my download beneath the sheet that we're working on and I can see through it to see the grid below. If, as I say, you're working on paper that's too thick to be able to do that, you will need to put your template that you've cut out over the top of the page that you're working on and then you're just going to draw inside these little holes. Hopefully that makes sense. It's so weird. I can see your comments on my laptop, but not on the live stream. Oh well. Oh well, I can see some of them. Here we go. So, I'm working A4. If you're using the download, it should all be laid out perfectly for you and you don't need to worry about re-jigging margins sizes. I'm going to draw in pencil first and we're going to do 12 individual wildflowers, one in each little rectangle, and we're going to draw them all in pencil first. Now I am using my Statler rotary pencil. It's a 0 0.5 millimeter and I've got an HP lead in it. Somebody asked the other day, how do I stop the sheet of paper that I'm working on from slipping about when I'm tracing? So quite often, like this page here is still attached to the binding, like that is still there. And then I slip the page that is my guide beneath it and it doesn't move. So you can either do that and not rip your pages out and work loosely. It also means I'm not drawing just flat onto the table. It's cushioned by the the rest of the paper that's in the drawing pad. So you can either do that or you can use a little bit of scotch tape, magic scotch tape. So there's flower number one. Here we have flower number two. This one's a bit like a hairbell. I'm going to pop a little bud on here. Now, I said this yesterday, but I'll say it again. Don't, don't panic if I'm going too fast for you. Um, you can watch this back after the live stream is complete and pause it, rewatch any bits that you need to see again. Don't, don't worry. Don't get yourself flustered over it. I'm going to do this like this, I think. This one, 
think this looks a little bit like a hollyhock, that flower that I'm planning. I don't know. Maybe some botany people will know. Does this look like a hollyhock or am I thinking of a different kind of flower? So this is a tutorial that isn't in the book at all, but if you have the book, you will be able to see some other um, ideas and examples of different types of stemmed wildflowers like this. So you could use them um, and do your own variation of this sort of grid artwork, or you could do a bigger sheet of paper with more rectangles in it and say have a four by four grid that would be 16 wildflowers and just make it something really special or do a tiny one just do three by three two by two make it a little square it would make such a pretty calendar so if you were to do a piece of art like this you could then pop with those little monthly calendar things at the bottom and give it to people for Christmas. There we go. This one's a bit like a cow parsley. I was prepping some um, tutorials I'm going to put on a Instagram this morning. And one of them was how to draw cow parsley like this. Next up. These are going to be like a little double belled, double belled blue bell. Just make these, I just make these names up. I don't even know if that other thing is cow parsley. That's what we call it at home. Is this cow parsley people? sort of like that white weed that grows everywhere but it's quite pretty it's like a fancy um gypsophilum baby's breath somebody said to me the other day a weed is just a flower without a marketing budget which i kind of like but also didn't like at the same time because i think weeds are often just flowers in difficult places aren't they I always like to support the underdog and I think weeds and wildflowers are the, the underdog of nature, aren't they? So this is the, the stem, we'll do a little flicky bit there and another here. Um, I'm going to curl this round like this. There we go. Okay. Next one, we'll do a circle here. I think I'll do the stem next. Mm. One, one petal like that, one like that. Let's make this a five, sorry, yeah, no, six petal. My maths. I had to laugh. I was in the supermarket the other day um, and I was in the stationery aisle, no surprise, looking at the pens and pencils. How good is supermarket stationery pens and pencils, by the way? You do not need to spend loads and loads of fancy art supplies. The supermarket often, I think, has really good stuff. Anyway, they were selling scientific calculators because it's obviously back to school time. And uh, I just remember my old Texas Instruments scientific calculator. I don't know if this was just a thing in the UK or if people in the US will know it as well. And uh, our maths department at school made such a big deal about getting one of these calculators so that you could, I can't even remember what we did with it, like draw graphs, something to do with coincide. And, uh, and I would say, I want I want to be creative when I when I leave school. I'm gonna to go to art school, and I think I just want to draw and be a designer. And my teachers would say to me, "Well, that's all very well and good, Joe, but what if it doesn't work out and things fall through, and you need something to fall back on? You need your maths." 
and I am all for education, but I could not work out what I was going to fall back on when it comes to those calculators and that graph because I can't remember anything to do with it. And I tried really hard, got a C. That was me honestly trying really hard. My poor parents spent loads of money on giving me a maths tutor. And then look, look where we are today. Can barely, can barely add up. I can barely do four times three. Remember yesterday when I was trying to work out how many squares were on this download? Sure, there's a lesson to be learned there somewhere. Right. I, this, by the way, I think it's like a little tulip. What do you think? I'm not sure. Oh, so somebody was just said her dad worked on the Texas Instruments calculators. Yeah, I, I remember this, like, this is completely unrelated to drawing, but I remember this rumour going around that you could program them to remember all the formula for when you went into your exams. But uh, needless to say, the writing was on the wall when it came to me in technology because back then I couldn't work out how to do that and I just probably still could barely use my own computer. Yeah, it was like a really expensive calculator as well. I'm sure my mum and dad paid about £40 for it. Maybe that's an exaggeration. But... And then all the second children in the family always got the hand-me-down scientific calculator that had like a lot of tipex and stuff on it. This one is a bit like a foxglove. So I've done the top sort of flower. What would you call this petal? And then I do the bottom, the next one, and then I do a bit on each side. And then I just follow that down to like a bit here. And I guess it's like, I want to see a tooth. Is that a bit disgusting? <laughs> but it's like down, up a little bit, and round again. And then this one, just do like that and gradually make them bigger as you get lower. It's like a foxglove or a lupin or something, I suppose. Let's do this leaf like this. Swoopy line to start with, and then it's going to follow that shape, but I'm going to do it like this, more sort of we still haven't decided on this word, guys. Is it variegated? I'm sure it's variegated. Variated. Here I fancy a little side on daisy. Let's do some circles here. Little petals. I suddenly had a panic about Fridays in QR at school last night because on Fridays, you might have noticed, I am not in the studio. I actually work from home really early in the morning before the kids get up and then I'm with the kids all day and then I catch up on work in the evening just because I like to have one day a week when I'm not in the studio and I'm just, well, with Mia because she's still little and Evie's at school. But I'm with the kids all day and we don't have childcare and I realised that I was going to have to do in art at school with no childcare on Friday and I was trying to work out if they would sit quietly for an hour while I did this and I realised that the biggest panic wouldn't have been if they would sit quietly, it would be trying to keep Evie off camera because she would just be butted in and trying to do her own tutorial, which I know you would really enjoy but just some kid. I think this is a bit like a stylized peony, we'll call it. And then let's do kind of fat little leaves. That's sweet. So as you can see, every time I draw a flower, I just make sure it does not go out with those grey rectangles. And if you're drawing it with the stencil, just stay within the stencil and I've done them all in pencil. Don't worry if it takes you a little bit longer, you can switch them out. You could just do all variations of the one flower if you wanted. So you could do that flower but just slightly different variations of it. Maybe the stem's coming straight down, maybe there's extra leaves. That would look really sweet as well. Okay. 
Now I'm going to remove my template and then I'm going to tear this sheet out of the sketchbook. So I'm working on Dalla Rowney layout paper, which is this one. And it's a big pad of it. Let me see if I can show you. Yeah, there's loads. And if you're looking for a similar brand of paper, a similar paper that's not Dalla Rowney, a 45 gram paper would work perfectly. It's sort of thick enough that you can draw it in ink and it's thin enough that you can trace through. So, new sheet of paper. Don't pull it out at the top so it's still attached with the glue binding. And then I slip the sheet that we've just worked on underneath it. Line it all up. And we're ready to ink. If you are working on... <laughs> Hi! <laughs> If you are working on paper that is too thick to trace through and you've used the stencil template, don't remove your paper from the sketchbook. You are just about to ink straight over the top of the graphite. You're going to ink over the top of the pencil and then once the ink is dry, we'll erase. So that's the only difference. Grab your fine liner, let's ink this. So, oh, <laughs> right. I'm going to use a 0.2 for this. Oh, that's a bit of a dodgy nib. I've been using that one for a while now. Okay. So take your time when you're inking. I can see the pencil line underneath. And I'm just going to do things like I'm going to make this line almost like a little fluffy sheep <laughs> and add some tiny little dots and then we'll ink the petals. This would make a really sweet coloured in picture as well so after you're finished inking it wait for your ink to dry, erase your pencil if you're doing the erase method and then you can grab your colouring pencils and you've made yourself a perfect little colouring page that you could then fill with colour. This one, I'm going to imagine that this line here is that central vein, so I don't need to do a line down the middle of it, but I only need to do lines like this on one side. Hope that makes sense. Okay, moving on. Now, remember we've got this loose leaf going around the stem here. So we'll draw it into there. And then I think it's the leaf's going to go under, right? And then it sounds really silly, but I need to work out the under overs out loud. So look, this leaf here is going to go under the stem here, but over the stem there. So we draw like that and then it cuts over the top and it goes like that and then it cuts over the top. Sweet, so like that looks like it's sort of wrapping itself around that stem. And then we'll do a couple more little leaves here. These are like really skinny, almost grass-like leaves and I'll do a few little dots down the side here. Next we've got our supposed hollyhocks. Mm. 
There we go. Now with these ones at the top, the little buds, I'm just going to do them so sort of poking out like that. And then we have the stem. Now see if you've been trying to draw that in pen without drawing the pencil underneath, could you imagine trying to like, I mean like that we know it's going to flow really nicely because we drew that stem first in pencil and then we place the blooms on the right place in the stem. If you try to draw it just straight out in ink, I don't know how you would, I honestly don't know how you would work that out so it all sort of flowed nicely. If it was me, I would have like a flower over here and a flower here and it would be all over the shop. So that's why I like this method where I'm really transparent and I just show you like I draw it in pencil, I figure it out and then I ink it to make it look a bit more finessed. But I definitely couldn't draw like this in ink straight away. I feel like we've drawn a lot of cow parsley since this began. Have we done a cow parsley a day? Let's do our little flowers. Okay, now we've drawn them, we're going to join them up with the little stems. Now you'll notice that I'm not doing loads of little dotty bits or flourishes or little twinkly things on this one, only because I want to preserve the preserve the integrity of those, those guidelines that we had and make sure each flower is just in its own little gap. Okay, now here we go with this one. If you struggle with your pen control and it's annoying you, that you can't do your stems all equidistant either you know so wait till I show you in a rough bit of paper so I mean if it annoys you that your stems are like that and not like that you have two options one quit worrying about it and just embrace the wobble like I do like that doesn't bother me or just draw your stems as a single line like that but you know, as a life motto, embrace the wobble. It's not a bad one. Let's do these little leaves here. The reason I thought of that is because that, look, it's much, it's like almost one line there, whereas it's much thicker there. And I'm sure that there'll be some of you going, oh my god, I can't live like that. It's just not right. Yeah, it doesn't, it's okay. It doesn't bother me so much. Let's do this. Now let's do up here, hmm, let's do this, little scallops. Okay, okay. Thank you to everyone that watches these live by the way. I mean, I honestly didn't think people would watch them live. We're only doing it at the same time every day to sort of preserve a little bit of order in my life. I assumed most people would watch this after the live. You know, at their own convenience because we've all got really busy lives. But loads of you um, tune in live, which is so lovely. Thank you for taking the time. It's really nice to have, to know that there's people on the other side of the internet when I'm doing these. This I'm going to do like this, like little lines. And everyone who's hiding at work doing it again today, well done. <laughs> Please don't get caught. Oh, I'm going to do these 
leaves like little heart leaves I think so look do your stem and then really just draw a heart they're quite sweet aren't they and then let's do three little lines one straight down one to the side another to the side oh I don't feel like I'm blinking enough today my eyes are really dry I really want to wear glasses when I'm drawing, not because I need them, just because I think it, um, it sounds really silly, but I think I need like a mental trigger, like glasses on, now I'm drawing. Like I just, I think it would make me feel like I'm in work mode. I guess the same way somebody would put on a uniform to go to work. Glasses on, time to draw. And people are going to say, oh, you get ones that have just got plain glass in them. Yeah, I know, I just, I would just feel a bit silly, I think. I think I would always know. Right. Let's do this leaf, like this. We'll do something different with this one, what will we do? Mm, oh, it's too late, I've done the stem, I know. We'll do this, and we'll just do really simple so draw the leaf and then continue that stem down and then just draw a line like that super simple dimple here's our little tulip like thing Actually, I'm going to add some little, I was about to say antennae, that is not an antennae. What is that? It's either, a st is it a st something again with a st? Oh. Some deal though. It's, these are not antennae. <laughs> Here's our little leaves. I feel like this is quite bare. Let's maybe do do some little straight up and down lines on this and some dots around here and some here there we go okie dokie oh, somebody says they've got a pair of prescription stamens thank you Sandra and Beverly, I think. Oh, loads of people know. Thank you, Stephen. What's a stick? Is there like, is that a, yeah, I'm about to embarrass myself. I'll just be quiet. Somebody else, I just saw a comment pop up saying that they have prescription glasses that magnify things just a little bit for crafting. That's such a good idea. I see loads of people colouring that have those huge lamps and then a magnifying glass that goes over the top so that you can see extra well what you're doing. Seems good. It seems like a smaller version of that. It would be so great for doing tiny details, wouldn't it? You could really get microscopic. Oh, I can't believe I did that again. I wasn't going to do that. I'm going to do that on this. because I was yapping. Yeah. It's a bit different, isn't it? I like to try and do something different with all the leaves, but if I'm chatting, I forget. Okay, okay. Foxglove Lupin. I'm not sure if it's exempt. Inky Identity. So what I'm going to do all the middle bits first. All the middle teeth. That's horrible, isn't it? Yuck. And then all the side ones. Can we do an extra little bit on the top? Why not? And then the stem. 
And then the leaf. This leaf looks like the wing of an angel, I've decided. Isn't it? Apart from that blobby bit there. Oh, well, that one. Now, let's add some little... If we do little lines like this, I think it makes it look more weird. Like that is the... Like this is lighter than this bit. It's like shading but not. Add some little dots. Alright. Lena, Lena, Linnea says, I am beginning to notice it is the details that can make or break a drawing. Jo, I think the details just bring it to life. Look, let me do, I'll ink this just in line and you can see it and then we'll add some embellishments and inky details and you can see the difference. So this would be it just as is. I don't know why I did that leaf all the way down there. I'll move it up there a bit now. Okay, so that would be that little daisy just on his own. I don't know why he's suddenly become a man. It's a very masculine daisy. Now let's add some details. So I'm going to do loads of little polka dots on this middle section. I am going to do a couple of little eye pluck, eyebrow plucking feathery lines from there. I'm going to do a couple of polka dots coming up from there. I'm also going to do some veins on this little leaf. Doesn't that look different? I think so anyway. I think it looks much nicer. Holy moly, we're storming through this. We're on to our last flower. Do this one here. I'm genuinely considering how I can show you this at the end without wrecking my camera set up. I have to like rip a camera out a tripod like Rocky so that I can zoom out enough to show you. gonna do this leaf like that. So smooth line on the bottom and then on the top just give it a bit of a zigzag. And then a little line, a couple of dots, a little line, a couple of dots. And that's it folks. Oh, how am I gonna show you this? I'm gonna just try tipping the camera. This might go a bit badly wrong. <gasps> Hold on. So this is what it looks like. <laughs> there you go. I know it's at a really funny angle. I've got the camera tipped up. But I think that's really sweet. Oh. Okay. I'm going to leave it on that for a couple of seconds so that you can catch up on any flowers that you're still sorting out. Thank you for watching. I hope that was a really sweet little tutorial and you really liked it. That actually brings us to the end of the garden section. Hi, I'm back. Um, so as you know, the new book, How to Draw Inky Wonderlands, is divided into three sections. Garden, ocean and forest. And we have now completed the 
in key arts go garden section so tomorrow we are moving on to the ocean so you will need your book if you have one a pencil, eraser, drawing pens and paper. So this one will be a step-by-step -step tutorial that we will do on paper and then there's going to be a little bit of draw along action that we'll do in the book if you've got one. If you don't have the book don't worry, um, we're, you can actually draw your own download tomorrow. I'll show you exactly what I mean. We're going to be learning to draw little fish. Uh, so you can either draw along in the book or a, we'll draw our own outlines tomorrow. All will make sense tomorrow. All will make sense tomorrow. But all you need really is your copy of the new book. If you've got one, pens, pencils, eraser, rubber. That, my friends, brings us to the close of this lesson. I am going to pop a photograph of a the tutorial that we did because it really is a cute little thing. Um, and I can't wait to see your pictures. Please continue to upload them to the gallery. A post. I just I love to see them and the stories that I am reading, like the comments that people are saying like, oh my goodness, I didn't know I could draw this way, this has been amazing, look what I've done. Everybody is so proud of themselves. One thing I see a lot of, oh it's not quite perfect, but da 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 da. It's not meant to be perfect. You know, this um, is a practice, it's a creative practice. And if it was perfect, then you would be a robot because nobody is perfect. Um, I think you should cease to pursue perfection, just enjoy the drawing and just aim to get every drawing that you do to be better than the drawing that you did the day before. That is literally what my art teacher told me. He was like that, Mr. Smith, when I was at school. As long as the piece of work that you're doing today is better than the thing that you drew yesterday, that's fine. You are on an upwards trajectory. I was trying to work out if that was going to be back to front, but I mean, upwards is upwards regardless of which way you look at it. Um, so please bear that in mind. And thank you so much. You're doing amazing. Like I genuinely cannot get over how beautiful the drawings are that you're posting online, how um, everybody's cheering each other on, how we have created this amazing inky revolution. And I hope you guys are having as much fun following the tutorials as I am making them. Thank you for bearing with me through all my fluffed lines, technical technicality problems. We're running really, oh no, I was going to say we're running really ahead. We're not, we're perfect, we're perfect. I will see you back here tomorrow for the next class. I'm going to hop on, answer as many questions as I can tonight. If you've got anything you want to ask, leave a comment below and I'll either answer it, typing, or I will mention it in tomorrow's class. Thank you for watching. Happy drawing. Create happy. I'll see you tomorrow.